Technology data is going to be absolutely critical for a whole lot of reasons, the most important of which at this point of the epidemic is to work out what proportion of people look as if they have been infected. We have a kind of S crude estimate, but that's a way of measuring it directly. It will, in the longer term, also probably be important in understanding uh, our options for, for example, getting a vaccine. Uh, and it may also be useful in, in, in very longer term uh, it, to provide evidence that someone has actually had an infection and they remain immune if uh, the tests uh, are reliable. Now, that's why it's important. You're, you're absolutely right that there is a lot of work not just going on in Port and Dan, to be clear. There are now substantial bodies of work uh, in the academic sector, in Public Health England, uh, and in many commercial uh, areas because everybody wants to have an accurate serology. And there are several different ways of approaching this and different people are going down different groups. Um, broadly, there are three things that have slowed us down to date. The first of which is we don't yet have a serological test which we can put a lot of reliance on, although it can give us a ranging shot and we do expect to have really quite crude early data, but uh, that definitely needs to be improved on. Uh, the second thing is that um, we don't yet have uh, a good sampling, what's called a sampling frame in epidemiological terms, and what we're trying to do is get that set up uh, across the country so that we have a wide view about what's happened in this infection in various areas. But the third thing, which is just a fact of biology, is that it takes uh, probably at least 21 days for the tests to be reliable. So you're always looking back in time uh, on this, and early data will therefore uh, be, uh, because early, that looking back in time 21 days, the epidemic was at a much earlier stage before we've reached the uh, evidence of a, the beginning of a peak, which uh, Sir Patrick talked about. Uh, it, that is a, a very different stage of the infection, and we will get, the data will become more useful over time. But, uh, you know, we're moving very fast in this area scientifically, but we are definitely not there in, en in either of the issues of getting the serolo serology or getting uh, the sampling frame, but we probably will have a crude f ranging shot fairly soon. That's the consensus of the scientists uh, involved. Tom, I think that gives you a pretty detailed answer. Is there anything you wanted to come back on? That was a very detailed answer. Can I just have one, one follow-up, though? Uh, an interesting addition today to the, to the data. We've got this all... Um, uh, cases uh, addition to the uh, to the the number of cases so that's outside of the hospital setting how that it looks like that's going to be very important is it going to change sage's predictions of how the peak is manifesting itself manifesting itself and what is happening with R? specifically are we seeing faster transmission for example in the care home setting at the moment and that's something you're now going to have to factor in to any uh, next phase response. Patrick, I'll let you address that one. Well, uh, as I said before, I think it's very important to um, have the hospital death rate and the total death rate. It's worth remembering again that the ONS rates are people who've got COVID on their death certificate. It doesn't necessarily mean they were infected because many of them haven't been tested. So we just need to understand the difference. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, SAGE view, the SAGE view is looking at the R of the transmission in the community, and I don't think any of those data change that opinion as to where the R is. As I've said, it's not true that the R is necessarily below one in every hospital or in every uh, care home, and that's the important area that we now need to look at and make sure that, um, that the appropriate measures are in place to try and reduce the R there. But it does